Today we're gonna to be looking at a cryptocurrency that is built to track down and just basically deal with and notify alert and keep you safe from scammers. They also created their own token that's launched on at least so far three different blockchains. And if they're a project against scammers, then hopefully their token wouldn't be scammy, right? Well, that's really what we're here to break down and look into today. My name is Vosker on the Vosker on YouTube channel. Today is another fun crypto token of review and just really, is it worth it? Right, you know, what's what the pros, the cons, we look at it all. Just like we look at the cutest Doug in the business, that's gonna be Tails, our CIO, our chief investment officer, even though we cannot offer financial advice. Let's jump into it. We got a lot to unpack today, so no, no further waiting. Okay, so happy. It's supposed to be an on-chain cybersecurity protocol for DeFi. That's decentralized finance. And it's supposed to be another way to put it as a decentralized alternative to money laundering regulations propped up by user involvement. And it's supposed to also have unparalleled public on-chain database with thousands of malicious addresses. So when I go to their website, I'll be honest first, it every time you go to a tab, it shows you this which is kind of cool the first time right and so you know we wait but whenever you come back they're going to show you that every single time i'd like to see a cookie or something sitting here and and, and stop hitting me with the with the intro right uh but again on chain security protocol it looks like a like a, like the one inch token had a baby with anonymous and we have an anonymous unicorn and so you can check addresses here, monitoring Ethereum, Solana, Near, and Bitcoin. Again, they also have their own token, which I'll talk more about here shortly. Um, but what they claim to be leveraging here is data, machine learning, Oracle, and a DAO. Very first cybersecurity project that is built, refined, and improved by the community. Anyone is able to report malicious acts, creating a one-of-a-time hub for crypto cybersecurity. Enter cross-chain solution, including additional blockchains than it even lists above. I believe these are in the process of being built out like XDC and HECO, because that's heckin' cool information. Cool as well as Polygon Matic, but Polygon addresses could really be checked just as easily as you're checking, say, Ethereum, right? Whereas Solana is an entirely different address there. Uh, but, and I have to say, I'm pretty thrilled that they are supporting Solana. I actually really like Solana. And you may be like, oh, well, sometimes the, the, the Solana chain goes down. Yeah, well, guess what? Um, if we could get away from these gas fees, I wish that Ethereum would go down sometimes. I mean, Ethereum is down today and it's, not very congested compared to the norm, and it still costs over $30 to complete a trade. To send $5 of USDT or USDC or at a dollar peg stablecoin on the ETH blockchain, it's gonna cost you 30 bucks. That, that's unreal, right? It, it's impossible to use for micro and even smaller transactions. That, that's not fun, and it really punishes you, especially if you're not dealing with large sums of money, right? And it just sucks, it's not fair. Um, to interact with all this crazy crypto stuff, you probably want to watch our beginner guide if you're not familiar, how to set up MetaMask and get started and, and everything like that. If you were paying attention also, you would have noticed that this Solana page says wrapped happy. And this happy token is trading on the Solana blockchain. Uh, you know, this is potentially high risk, high reward, right? It doesn't take a lot to explode a market cap when it's only $9 million but it also does not take a lot to send something like this to $90 million. As always, it's not financial advice. You do whatever you want to do. Looking at Etherscan and pulling up the happy token address on that blockchain, we can see 4,000 holders. We see 55,000 transfers and a market cap fully diluted here at about $8 million. Looking at happy on the Binance Smart Chain, we can see 2,500 addresses holding 90,000 transfers, and this reports the market cap fully diluted at about $1.3 million. Punching in this contract address, wow, Dex tools, that, that's enjoyable. So let's pull it up on, we're gonna pull it up, we're gonna have to do it twice. Okay, so I've gone and pulled it up twice. We can see that on the BNB smart chain, we have total liquidity of about $100,000. And on the Ethereum blockchain, we have total liquidity here about $340,000. This shows daily volume at 13,000 and doing daily volume of about 16,000 on the BNB smart chain. So always interesting to look at the tokenomics here, looking at the numbers, looking at the fundamentals and not just making up a bunch of 
as they like to give it a nicer term, technical analysis, professional chart guru. So speaking of another fundamental, a cryptocurrency based on being on-chain cybersecurity is getting in bad with chain analysis. And what does that mean exactly? And what is chain analysis if you don't know? It's building trust in blockchains, creating transparency for a global economy built on blockchains, enabling banks, businesses, and governments to have a common understanding of how people use cryptocurrency, providing data, software, services, and research to government agencies, exchanges, financial institutions, and insurance and cybersecurity companies in over 70 countries. Their data platform powers investigation, compliance, and risk management tools that, if you don't know, and this is true, they've been used to solve some of the world's most high profile cyber criminal cases in relation to cryptocurrencies. It kind of goes against a lot of the crypto ethos of like, you know, you're not supposed to know what I'm doing, I'm doing whatever I want, and that's digital freedom. And just because you want privacy doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong, I mean, you literally just want privacy. Chain analysis is a big deal, right? They work with pretty much every major entity in cryptocurrency. I mean, look at this list right here. And the list gets longer as you go down. So yeah, they probably work with your favorite, especially centralized cryptocurrency exchange. So they say they're happy to collaborate with chain analysis on multiple fronts since happy has become so much more than a mere DeFi protocol. The four main takeaways here is investigative partners. Happy claims that they'll be directly tackling some of the cases coming from chain analysis. They'll also get access to their bleeding edge software and tools. So Happy will be basically buffing up their decentralized option with support from a centralized option, chain analysis, really kind of enabling them instant access to very powerful and advanced and notorious tools with a track record. Learn from the best certificates and courses. Thanks to Chainalysis' extensive and enduring background in and outside of the cryptocurrency AML anti-money laundering sphere, trove of opportunities for their team to gain knowledge and stretch farther in the cybersecurity space, as well as sharing Oracle knowledge. So Happy and Chainalysis will collaborate on Chain. Basically, Happy uses Chainalysis specifically designated sanctions Oracle to further enlarge the list of addresses connected to sanctions avoidance in accordance to internationally imposed restrictions and add them to their database. So this is a whole ordeal. It's a touchy subject. Um, I, I, you know, for what it's worth, I am in the camp of I don't want to see censorship. I don't want to see control. You know, these blockchains are supposed to be immutable. They're supposed to be borderless. They're not supposed to be ran by any central you know, entities. We're not supposed to have gatekeepers. In my opinion, we should be using other tools to take down bad people. Happy clearly shows that they know how to pick power players, not only partnering up with chain analysis, but they also made today's video possible here on the Voscoin YouTube channel. You know, so I'll, I'll leave that at that. You're obviously here and invited to create your own conclusions on that front. Happy has been in development publicly for over a year now, right? And they've had this same kind of focus and premise from the beginning. They have these initial, uh, you know, diagrams here. We have centralized exchange, we have a hacker doing something bad, and then we have their analysis where they're trying to, you know, alert everyone of here's a bad address doing bad things. And this is all being controlled out of the Happy DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. Again, you know, basically decentralized cybersecurity, which which is pretty cool and pretty simple, at least for initial glance and, and understanding. They've also brought their own Happy token to market. And so let's look at it. Hacking round. So 24% allocation price per one Happy is five. Unlocked day zero, 10% every month unlocks 10% at TGE, the generation event, right? 24,000 tokens. Then they had a private round, 19%, and they increased the price per happy up to 7.5. After that, they had a 2% allocation for pools and Dow maker price per happy there is at 10. Moving forward, 1% public round, liquidity pool 12%, farming three years, distributing 18% of the tokens there, and team plus KOLs or basically influencers, they could possibly put some advisors in there as well, 24%. So that brings us to a 100%
token allocation. Total supply is 1 million with 460k offered in three token sale rounds. Now, look at those prices. Where does the token fall now? It is trading above its highest sale. So these early investors are actually sitting on huge returns. I mean, we're talking a 13x right now. And it's down from its all-time high. It's somehow tr trading at a whopping $200. And it's been trending down for months. But the volume has been very low after this drop-off here. At least in comparison to what it was. But let me clarify. Trading half a million dollars per day or more is, is definitely not low volume. But where is all this volume coming out of? Well, let me tell you. A lot of it's coming out of Gate.io. They're also listed on another popular centralized cryptocurrency exchange, and that's going to be Qcoin. All of these are with USDT pairings here. So although we analyze what they were doing on chain, we can see that they're doing astonishingly high volume, even though a lot of that may be wash trading that these exchanges kind of do and offer, right? Uh, at the end of the day, that's an insane amount of volume. Their, their volume is nearly, nearly their market cap. Very curious to see where this goes. 1 million tokens is not a lot at all. If this really kind of takes off, this will be a very expensive token simply due to supply. We're, we're used to seeing and dealing with tokens in this kind of era that trade with not even billions, but more towards trillions, quadrillions, sextillions amount of tokens. Like it's 100 billion dollars. Another thing to add some support and validity to Happy would be the fact that they have a public core team. A lot of the members are public. Their names, their faces attached. LinkedIn, you can look into them and their background. We have Dimitri over here that, you know, he doesn't have a ton of connections or, you know, a lot of uh, the huge track record here on LinkedIn, right? Uh, but we go over to their CTO, Andre. We do see more followers. We do see more connections and we see a bit more experience here. And we see also a unique stance with them being out of or at least this team member out of ukraine and obviously we're all well aware of the the global situation with that right now they did have an audit completed on top of having some public team members this was by none other than hacken hacken says there are no critical issues there are no high issues there own there are no medium severity issues and there are some low severity issues so hey i'm not a coder so i heed those that you know are a programmer that do have that level of technical expertise. I try to learn and do the best I can, but again, it's not a profession, it's not my forte. And that's really all we can ever do in life is really try to leverage our strengths and you know seek help with our weaknesses. So that's an overview of Happy. I think they have a very interesting use case here. They're not a meme coin, they're not a coin. They wanna be a DeFi security protocol. The question is, do people care? Because everyone says they hate scams and scammers and this and that. But, you know, what's the use case here? Happy's moving towards enabling staking for their token and, and other things. But ultimately, decentralized cybersecurity, cool, great. But how do they weave the token in to create utility, to create demand? That's what we'll really have to see, right? You know, obviously they could expand towards offering audit services. Maybe they could only take payment in Happy tokens. You know, again, very curious to see where they go with this. I think it's cool. It's definitely a refreshing token compared to many others we've seen over the last year, like the 907th token that puts Inu at the end. I bet half these guys don't even know that that means dog in Japanese. But guess what? I'm a Shiba Inu owner, so obviously your boy knows. Your boy also knows that you better slap the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on happy or if it's making you unhappy. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, we upload daily, so I hope to see you tuning in tomorrow as well. Have a good one.